Hello and welcome to PMCLounge.com. My name is Shoaib and today I have a special guest with me. His name is Nishan, who is a working project manager right now uh, with six years of experience. Started off with a startup right in his engineering days and uh, he recently got his PMP done. So uh, welcome to PMC Lounge, Nishan. Thank you, Shoaib. Thank you so much. Thrilled to be on the show because uh, you can share your experience with all the aspirants Maybe they are going through the same journey that I did and they have the same questions. Hope this experience that I share today helps them a lot. Great, great. Yeah. So here we are uh, basically talking about the PMP, the experience that Nishan had with his PMP. And I get this question a lot and that is why I'd like to ask you as well. Why did you decide to take up the PMP certification? <laughs> what bug was it that you decided, okay, I need to get this certification? Because there are a lot of other certifications available out there. Absolutely, sure. Um, so, so I'd say that uh, when I started my career uh, as a corporate trainer, so every assignment that was given to me was a project. So it was recently that I realized it is actually project management discipline that I was doing all along. And uh, when this happened, I started doing some research like everyone does on, you know, what are the different things do you have in project management? What are the valid certifications from where you can get the knowledge? So if you actually go to internet and look for project management, there are like a zillion websites out there claiming everybody knows project management, right? So then when I looked for this, I stumbled across a PMI, PMP. So this is something that has the foundational element of how the project management is done uh, across across the countries in multiple disciplines. So you get that information, you put that, you tailor that into your organization when you do some kind of activity. That's that's everything, right? That's everything that you get out of it. So and considering PMP as the gold standard, uh, I had no other choice but to take it up. Yeah, yeah. I really like that the word you used here, tailoring, because a lot of people tend to think that PMP is just for software professionals. PMP is just used in IT industry. But PMP yeah. never defines itself as an IT based certification or a software industry based certification. It is industry agnostic. And that is why tailoring is actually uh, quite a big concept in uh, PMP courseware. It will be even bigger with the new PMP because they want to work, uh, they want the PMP courseware, whatever that you study for your PMP exam, to work in all sorts of projects across all industries. So really like the word that you used here, tailoring. And then let's talk about the exam itself. So how much time did you take to prepare? Oh yeah, so uh, let's start with the journey. So. I started uh, preparing for PMP exam in the year 2020, so last year. So the first couple of weeks, uh, I did go through the monstrosity, that is the, the PMBOK. So looking at the book, so I started you know, questioning myself, will I be actually able to take up the exam? Mm -hmm. So two weeks down the lane, I broke it down, I started studying it, but then the problem was the different commitments, the work, everything gets along and you don't get the time that you want to uh, you know, invest in uh, PMP. So uh, so I lost my course and uh, again, that there was a delay. So one thing to note here is I had not set a deadline for myself. So, mm. so I had not set up saying, you know, December, I need to get this done. So this kept going on and uh, yeah, then one fine day I was like, you know, just got out of sleep and uh, I just booked my exam. And then I started tracking it back, backwards, on uh, what needs to be done. Uh, the interesting thing was I actually picked up the last chapter first, that is the procurement management, because that was a whole new horizon for me. Mm -hmm. So once that was done, got more confidence, tried to go through different uh, knowledge areas. And I think uh, that that was more of uh, you know pushing myself to get it done because you had a milestone that is the exam is changing in December. So right. that was one motivation to get things done. And um, so I took a couple of weeks off uh, from the work. Uh, so I think two weeks off where I kind of studied on all these things. So PIMBOK I revised a couple of times, two to three times, mm -hmm. because uh, to be honest, that is that is the only truth, right? So everything is derived out of it. So, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's how it went. 
Yeah, a lot of people had to rush their exams through because of this upcoming change. Uh, in second January, the PMP has now totally changed. So a lot right. of people I know uh, personally as well. A lot of people had to rush in and get their certifications in. So yeah, good that you got done because some of the folks that I know were not able to crack it and are now wondering what to do with the new exam and all. But yeah, continuing uh, our discussion on your journey of the PMP, what were the last few days like? What was one day before the exam like? Or what was the day of the exam like? Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, my final run up to this exam was quite interesting because uh, as I told you, I took some time off from the work. And uh, this was a time where I had not completed the PMBOK. So I had to rush in, I had to break down I had to do my timetable for every day. So you do a timetable and you know a little bit of project management, you do a tactical plan. So if this doesn't work, what's the next thing? I could not finish this chapter by six o'clock. So that means I have to stay up all night and finish something else. So my run up was I had a big chunk of um, sections, knowledge areas, three to four knowledge areas per day. So I used to go at this pace, even though I couldn't grasp everything, I would complete it and then read it again. So I had these cycles, two to three day cycles. Um, so that was uh, that was more of a run up till one day before the exam. And one day before the exam, uh, so all I did was I just had noted down all the points. So I couldn't go back to the PMBOK again because if you do that, that is that is crazy because you would forget everything and you would reread the whole thing again. So I, I made a points uh, in the entire list and then I went through it. So I did the same thing uh, uh, on the day of exam as well. So my exam was around 4 p.m. And uh, from morning till uh, 2 o'clock, I guess, uh, I went through each of the headings, each of the ITTOs, uh, not memorizing it, just trying to understand, just trying to connect how these things link in. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, yeah, that, that was it. And uh, then it was uh, game on. <laughs> Cool. Uh, you mentioned how you had to take two weeks off from your work. Yes. Uh, some people, when they take off and their colleagues know that they are preparing for PMP and all, <laughs> it sort of creates extra pressure. Was yes. that your case as well? <laughs> definitely, definitely. So I kept this under covers for a very long time. But <laughs> uh, once the, uh, the holidays were approved, I got the time off. So the entire world knew that Nishan was actually preparing for PMP and this <laughs> added a lot of pressure because if in case if it wouldn't work out then and that would be in the month of December. So you don't have you cannot take another exam because you're going into the month of January and everything changes. Right. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of pressure going into the exam. Mm -hmm. And then how was the exam like when you started? How were your next four hours like? <laughs> so uh, so this four hour exam is quite interesting because I did take up a couple of simulator exams. So I wanted to know whether I could actually sit for four hours and take up the exam because that's to be honest, that is uh, something I was not good at. That's not my strength. Um, and because you lose focus and uh, yeah, there's a lot of distractions. Um, I took one exam and uh, that was too much for me. So I took the, I took the next day off. So mm -hmm. then I started wondering what would I do in the exam? Because <laughs> uh, so four o'clock was my exam. I logged in 30 minutes prior. So I just wanted to set up everything because uh, I read this online where the proctor would, you know, ask you to scan the room, uh, you know, ask you a couple of questions. There would be a, a procedure of uh, onboarding that is you'll have to submit your passport or other ID proof. So I logged in and I waited for 30 minutes. Uh, the camera was right there. So you you actually you're not sure whether the proctor is looking at you or are you in the queue. So 30 minutes I had to stare at the camera and uh, after that my exam was supposed to start at four but due to some technical difficulty on their end Pearson uh, this went on for like 45 minutes delayed. Um, so yeah, and I was really not sure what I was supposed to do because nobody's talking to me. I cannot chat with anyone because mm. I'm still in the queue and I'm not supposed to get my phone out. So I don't know if they're trying to contact me. So that added even more pressure uh, going into the exam. 
But uh, after 45 minutes, I got a proctor and they helped me log, log in to the system. And then that was it. I had the exam come right in front of me. I started uh, doing it. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I have also um, got this uh, feedback from a couple of uh, more aspirants who are now PMP holders <laughs> that uh, they also had some issues and their exam was also in December. I guess Pearson was uh, basically overwhelmed with the number of uh, yes. people taking up the exam. Absolutely. Okay. And what are your tips then? for someone preparing for the PMP exam. And I really like the way you mentioned that, you know, taking up the mock exam just to see if you are able to sit for four hours because people take that lightly. It is not yes. a light thing to sit for four hours and concentrate and focus on the questions itself. So I really <laughs> like that answer. But any other tips that you would like to give for the PMP aspirants? Start with a deadline, uh, set a deadline for yourself, because if you don't do that, you will always push the exam, procrastinate this because in the back of your head, you always want to be prepared and you will never be 100 percent prepared. That's mm. that's never going to happen. And uh, I think setting up a deadline gives you that perspective where you can plan backwards on uh, what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the first and foremost thing. And uh, maybe the second thing I would say is read PMBOK because a lot of people out there, they have this question or they fear PMBOK. Looking at the size of book, they fear it. But they have designed, PMI has designed that PMBOK for a reason. It challenge you, challenges you for a reason, right? And everything else, I mean, uh, like show how you are doing videos, how there are so many materials out there. They give you a better perspective. They make you understand. It's the first step that you take in. But mm. after that, it's on you. You cannot just rely on just one small material and just, you know, leave it out, leave out the rest. So I think that is the first step. I mean, the second step, read Pimbok. Please read it uh, because I have read it four times, uh, not bragging it because I pushed myself to read it because mm. it, without that, I wouldn't be able to, you know, answer the questions. Absolutely. So, yeah. So that's the second and uh, one more point is do not stress on uh, ITTOs, the inputs, outputs, tools and techniques. There are a lot of people out there who are just giving up on PMP because of this. They think we have to memorize this. We will get the questions right. Trust me, I've written the exam. It's not that. It's very difficult to identify what the ITTOs are if you don't understand them, if you cannot connect them. So it's it's impossible. So don't stress on it. Try to understand it. Try to understand the most important ITTOs. What is the most important output and the most important input? Everything mm -hmm. else all in place. Uh, one okay. thing, uh, one thing I'd like to add here is, and I keep on saying this in all of my videos, that PMP is not a test of your memory. You True. don't have to memorize ITTOs. They are not testing how good your memory is. And yes. there are a lot of articles and videos and stuff out there that tell you how you can memorize the yeah, ITTOs. You don't have to do that. And Nishan here is saying the <laughs> same thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I tried this. I tried memorizing the ITTOs like everyone else did. Uh, I took the mock exam and it didn't help me at all. And that is when I realized if I don't understand it, I'll never be able to answer the questions. Right. So, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, there's one last point that I would like to add is um, gratitude. You know, you need to thank the people that helped you throughout the journey because, see, for, for somebody to start something, there has to be an inspiration. Maybe you attended a workshop. Maybe you saw your friend doing this. Maybe somebody guided you. You need that kind of gratitude because Without the gratitude, it is very difficult to grow the community. And when you grow the community, then there is a sense of discipline in the project management area. Mm -hmm. So I think that is very important uh, because even when I started this, when I was introduced into this discipline, it was more of, you know, people talking about this or, you know, watching videos. So, you know, somebody says, OK, start a project. What's the scope? OK, I want to see what the scope is. Let's go and check on YouTube. There are so many people who have done it. So, you know, you have to thank those people and, uh, you know, acknowledge them. So I think these are all the tips that I have. Uh, so, 
Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, everything. Nishan. Really like the dimension you brought in about gratitude. Uh, I hope a lot of people that are watching this video will find it helpful and all the best for those who are preparing their for their PMP exam. And thanks again, Nishan. Thank you for taking the time out. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Shiv. Thank you so much for the opportunity.